Let's turn our Bibles to Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter two. Second Peter. Chapter two. Second Peter. Chapter two. Verses nine through sixteen. Second Peter chapter two verses nine through sixteen. The title message is the way of Balaam, the way of Balaam, the way of Balaam. Lord kind of pivoted the direction of preaching, you know, today, but Lord has put on my heart. Amen. Second Peter chapter two verse nine. The Bible says, "The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations." And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts, they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Verse 15, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madman, madness of the prophet. Father Jack, can you please pray for the message? Lord, just trying to thank you, first of all, for marvelous salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to, to wash all our sins away. And thank you for eternal security. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for the Bible in the church where we can gather, uh, where we can listen to your word. We ask you that you feel pastor with the Holy Spirit, given the liberty and the authority directly from you to preach and declare your word unto us. Amen. We ask you that you will fill each and every one of us with the Holy Spirit as well. Open our hearts, eyes, and ears to your word. Help us not to, to think about the things that are happening outside in the world or personally in our lives or the things that uh, we're thinking in the future. Amen. But help us just focus right now on your word, then preaching of your word. So yes. We can not only get convicted, but change. Lord Amen. God. Many of us just hear the word, and one ear, and then let it go out. But let it not only go through our ears, but let it drive in deep in our hearts. Lord God. Yes, Lord. You don't need us, but we need you each and every single moment. Yes. And then we, we beg you, Lord God, please be with this congregation yes. so that we can please you, Lord God. Protect us from the devil's attacks. And we thank God, love you, and just say pray. Amen. 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 If you've been coming to Wednesday night service, this, this will be a familiar topic to you. So today I'm going to go on a more of a, you know, instead of Bible study, plus, you know, it will be a preaching. The way of Balaam. The way of Balaam is very pre prevalent this day and age. Whether you know it, whether you are aware or not, the way of Balaam is everywhere. And people do not know the way of Balaam. When you hear this phrase, the way of Balaam, be careful, be wary, you know, avoid the way of Balaam, many people will send you straight to Revelation 2.14. Let's go to Revelation 2.14. Why? Why can't they just explain the way of Balaam? Because they don't know it. Simple as that. When you don't know it, and you're up there in the pulpit as false prophets and false teachers, what are you going to do? You're going to make something up. 
Right. Just like when children have no good excuse to explain to their parents when they, you know, break the jar, break the window, break the glass, they just start making things up. You know, bird flew into the window, broke it. <laughs> it wasn't the baseball that I was playing with, right? You know, let's go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, but I have a few things against thee. You know, Lord's talking to church of Pergamos. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So we see the doctrine here, where there's a fornication going on, and there's the eating of sacrifice unto the idols. So there's idol worship, and there's fornication. And there's also verse 15, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which things I hate. And that's the doctrine of conquering common people. And we refer to them right now as Catholics. Yes. A lot of times people get offended. A lot of times people get offended because they don't know the truth. People are very ignorant this day and age. Yes. You and I cannot be that ignorant. Ignorant, ignorance shouldn't be an excuse for you to act stupid. Just because you don't know the doctrine, you can't say that when you hear someone criticize or preach against, you know, Catholics, Jehovah's Witness, or any other things, even Baptists out there, you can't say, oh, you're too harsh and you're wrong. I mean, when Jesus Christ preached to the Pharisees and Sadducees and those stuff, what did Jesus Christ say? Yeah. You know? Depart from me, curse it into everlasting fire, prepare for devil and his angels. Woo! Amen. Ye serpents, ye generous and vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's Lord Jesus Christ we're talking Amen. about. And people say, you don't have love of Jesus Christ. That's the biggest love of Jesus Christ, right. so yes. that people won't have to burn in hell. Yes. When we talk about this way of Balaam, we see in 2 Peter 2.15, it's hidden to many people. Why? Because they don't have King James Bible, number one. Right. So if you are listening and if you're here, the King James Bible is not the perfect word of God to you and for you, then you can't find the truth in the word of God. Right. You can't be that person looking for original. <laughs> Original's gone. That's right. <laughs> My God is powerful, perfect, God who can preserve his word. Amen. Your God is a devil. That's right. I mean, devil will deceive you saying that, oh, only the, you know, best translations are the best. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying, oh, you know, no one has seen the original, but, you know, that's why we don't have it. I mean, they don't believe in the Psalms, chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. They don't believe in the preservation of the word of God. Amen. If you're in that boat, you got to wake up. Yeah. I mean, if you have Bible verses that's missing, I mean, making Jesus Christ liar, when he said, heaven and earth yeah. shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I mean, everything will pass away, but his word will be still there. Yeah. But it's missing, right? Verses that he said, words that he came out of his mouth. Yes. Why would you use a Bible that makes our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, liar. You're dumb. I mean, when I found out, you know, I changed it right away. Amen. Um, I was using New Idiots Version, also known as New International Version. Never opened the Bible. All church that I went to, all we did was, you know, praise and worship. Jesus loves you. Repeat this prayer every Sunday. I didn't know I was saved. Had a bad day. You know, I thought I was going to burn in hell. Never had the assurance of salvation. And suddenly, somehow, by grace of God, I got to know King James Bible, and I was looking at some NIV, and their verses are jumping. Mm -hmm. Like in book of Acts chapter 8, hey, where's like verse 37? Hey, where's like other verses, right? Yeah. And you study a little bit more, then you start studying the origin of the Bible tree. Before 1880, there were only two Bibles out there, King James Bible 
and Catholic Bible. That's it. One came from Alexandria, bad one, world, Egypt, and the other one came from Antioch of Syria. Good Bible, right? Yes. Is it so hard to believe that if there's God, there's devil? If there's God's Bible, there's got to be devil's Bible. Amen. Yeah. Yes. You, you're so naive if you think that this world is perfect. You know, we're going to be kumbaya, hold hands together, everybody goes to heaven. No, that, we don't live in a perfect world. Amen. Then, if you think logically, if there is a devil's Bible, a bunch of devil's Bibles now, and if there's God's Bible, then the Bible that you're holding, do you have God's Word of God? And we have that Bible, it's called King James Bible. Amen. And it's not New King James either. No. New King James and good old King James Bible, there are differences, right? I always say, me and Brother Richard, we're not the same. I mean, are you going to ever call him, you know? Hey, Pastor Jay? No, please don't. He doesn't look like me. No. Are you going to call me like Brother Richard? No. No. If they're not the same, they're different. That's right. Yeah. What more does it have to show? Even if one word's different, it changes the meaning, it's different. Right? right? If I have a twin, and if he has a huge mole here, we're not the same. Right? Every part of the body could be the same, but he has a mole. Or it could be me too, okay? <laughs> if I have a mole. So we are not the same. Then why is it so important when you look at the way of Balaam? Because you can't find the way of Balaam if you have the wrong Bible. They have the word way of Balaam, but how are you going to interpret, how are you going to find out the meaning? If the verses that explains that way is altered. Yes. You and I have to put a lot more precious emphasis and how thankful we should be when it comes to the Word of God. Amen. I mean, this is precious Word. Amen. Man, are you really, really guarding it with your heart? Are you really, really loving the Word of God? Because as you study, as you listen, and as you, you know, meditate on the Word of God, it should dawn on you more and more. And this is God's Word. Yes. Amen. And there's no way a human being could do this. But, you know, you rely on scholars out there, right? I have to listen to Joel Austin. i got to hear what he talks about the way of Balaam before I can make my choice, you know? John MacArthur's of the world, you know, all these cuckoos out there. No, you have it right in front of you, the perfect word of God. Then what is the way of Balaam? Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And many of you might, may know this already if you've been studying you know, differences between King James and the other versions. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The Bible says, For the love of money, what is? For the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all kinds of evil, some evil. King James Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, That's it. which while some coveted after they have err from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. So for the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. All evil. What do you think people like Billy Graham, all those people fell, right? Yes. Covetousness came. That's why. Right? So it is the root of all evil. This world runs because people love money. Yeah. Right? People do wicked stuff because of love of money. Yes. And Bible clearly says the root of all evil. But let's see what other versions say. Other versions says root of all kinds of evil. They always want to find the way out. All kinds of evil. Right? Also, this kind, maybe not. That kind, maybe not. Right? Go, let's go back to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. Then how does that work here? 
2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. So there's a definition right there. Then what is the way of Balaam? What is the definition? Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loved money. It didn't matter if it was unrighteousness, if it was righteousness. It doesn't matter. He just loved money. So what is the way of Balaam? Love of money is the way of Balaam. As Christians, you and I have to be very careful. We need money to survive. But once you cross the line and once you start loving money, you're going to be just like Balaam. Yeah. I mean, Balaam was a prophet of Gentiles. Why would Balak go after him, right? I mean, Balak didn't go to someone who, you know, out there on the street doing nothing. He went to some prophet. Yes. Because to him, he was reputable, right? Yeah. So he wanted him to curse the Israel. But this guy, as we go to the book of Numbers, he loved money. That was his downfall. Yeah. Before he got to... Revelation 2, 14, before he came up with the doctrine of Balaam, it all started with the way of Balaam, root of all evil. It started with the love of money. What do you strive to do, Christian? Is your goal just trying to make money day after day? Because some of you, you have neglected the word of God. You have neglected the ministry. You have neglected God himself. You have neglected your Lord and Savior because of your love of money. It's not about working hard. You have to work hard. Yes. But because you love money so much, you neglect things of God. Amen. And many Christians fall into it. And then don't be naive that I won't fall into it if you haven't. It's going to come your way. Yes. The temptation will come your way. You've got to be tested when it comes to money. Every single Christian will be tested with money. Amen. Because God has tested you. Yes. Do you love me more? Or are you going to be like Balaam who loves money more? Right. And once you start loving money, you're going to act like Balaam. Yeah. He gone astray because of covetousness. Blinded. I'm like, you, I trusted you. You used to be that great young Christian, man and woman. But you're not the same anymore. Why? I don't have to look anywhere. I just go to the Word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. You love money, that's why. Yes. And that love of money is root of all evil, and it connects a lot of things together. Amen. It connects bad acquaintances. Yes. It does. Absolutely. You know, this day and age, we have a lot of calls out there. But it's nothing new. History repeats itself. Right. Yes. Balaam's way led to error of Balaam, led to doctrine of Balaam. What is the common thing about the heathen worship, pagan worship, Baal worship? Two things. Worshiping idols and a bunch of fornication going on at the same time. That's it. You know, I mean, all the way back in the Genesis 10, right? You know, Nimrod and all the Semiramis worshiping sun god. You know what they did? On a Sunday... Between 10 and 12, around that time, they gather around. They just commit fornication with each other and worship idols. That's what they did. That's why Jewish people hated the thought of salvation going to the Gentiles. Their view of Gentiles are these hidden people committing immorality over and over and over. Yes. That's why when you read the book of Moses, right, you start reading Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. You see Exodus, all these things that you think that, oh, do human beings do this? <laughs> they do it. Absolutely. And you are very capable of doing it too. Yes, I am. And my, me too, you know. Amen. I'm not going to be holier than thou here. We all can do everything that's written in there. Yes. Then you got to think, man, why do I love money so much? Because you've been out of fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. You don't care about what he thinks. That's why you care about money more than anything. Oh, yeah, I want to marry that person. But I got to have money. I want to look good, right? You know? Oh, yeah, I got to show up to my family. I got to have money. So I got to 
to something. Ministry, forget it, right? What's ministry to me? It's nothing to you. I mean, a lot of times people think that, oh, yeah, ministry needs me. God needs me. <laughs> he never needs you. Right. Ministry doesn't need you. Right. Who do you think you are? Yeah. As Brother Richard prayed, you and I are less than nothing. Amen. Just because you do something at the church doesn't mean you're anything. Yeah. Just because I preach doesn't mean anything. I'm nothing. Just by grace of God, you know, he's given me this role, just role different than you. You sit on your pews, you know, you do your chores, you do, you know, practices and everything because that's your role. Yes. You do best where you are. But if you don't do that, then forget it. You don't care. You're like, I'm so busy. Everybody's busy. I hate that excuse, right? Yes. I mean, I work full time. Amen. I mean, and there's ministry. But I never put my work above ministry Amen. ever. I mean, ever. And I don't miss any ministry because God's given me grace. Yes. Because I put, as long as I put God's ministry above anything else, He's going to find a way for me to come to ministry. Amen. And that's since coming here over 25 years ago. So for you to say, I'm too busy, I have graveyard, I have, you know, morning yard, you know, I have, you know, dawn yard and everything, you're just an excuse. Do you think Jesus Christ gave excuse when he shed his blood for us? Come on. It's too early in the morning. Yeah. It's too early for me to be crucified. Yeah. No. He was faithful till the end. Amen. He said, it is finished. Thank you, Lord. But none of you, many of you can't say, it is finished. Many of you start it, but you're not going to finish. That's an unfortunate thing. That's why not many people will receive all the you know, crowns that you should receive, right? Yes. At the judgment seat of Christ. And one of the crowns is finishing the race, yep. right? Amen. You have to finish the race. Wherever you started, you have to finish. Yes. As long as you have a starting point, which means if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's your starting point. You have to finish. As we see the way of Balaam, this guy was not a pushover, by the way. I mean, he was very religious. I mean, God spoke to him. That tells you everything. He was known as a prophet. But he loved money. And then he just went down. If you are sick, you know, your body can't move and you can't serve the Lord, man, you know, I really, really, you know, empathize with you. But if you don't serve the Lord because of your love of money, to me, if you put anything else above Lord Jesus Christ, that's all your love of money because it comes down to it. Like, do you really love Jesus Christ? Don't say yes. You don't. I feel ashamed. Like, if I have, if, you know, like, oh, yeah, I could die for Jesus Christ right now. I love the Lord. But outside of church, you're the worst human being. Yeah. You're like, oh, Sunday, why are you here? You know, you don't, you don't have to work today. Oh, no, 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 I have to work, you know. I got to work. You know, I got to i got to make some money so I could give more money to the church. Yeah, right. Yeah. Those people never give more money to the church. They give more money to their stomach. Yes. Yeah. I guarantee you, don't ever use that excuse. Don't ever say, I'm missing church because i got to give more money to church. God doesn't want it that way. He will never bless it that way. Amen. Then you have to check your priorities over and over and over. That's why if you are saved, you have to go to the Lord in prayer each morning. I mean, this year I've been emphasizing it almost, you know, all my preachings and Bible study because it's that important. First thing you do when you wake up, you got to pray. Yes. You got to let the Holy Spirit lead you that day. You got to let the Holy Spirit be the decision maker. You got to let the Holy Ghost give you wisdom Amen. wherever you do that day. If you don't, you're going to have a miserable day. Yes. And that day grows to weeks, grows to months, grows to years. Yes. I mean, in the Bible, 
Just like in the book of Matthew chapter 20, when you get a chance, you go. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. The Lord gives some parables. I mean, of course, there's a deeper doctrine meanings into it because of the times of the day. But we have some workers that come later in the day, and they get the same wage as the people who started, right? And the Lord's like, you know, and people are complaining. I've been here all day. How come I'm getting the same wage, you know? You know why? Because they work harder than you. Because they work hard. And it's up to the owner to give the wages anyways. What's your complaint? Right. Many of you have been coming to church for years and years and years. You're still at the same place. You still are making penny an hour when other people are making 10 cents an hour already. And they've been here for only a month, five months, six months because their heart's in the right place. You've been here 15, 20, 30 years. You never change. Worst, you're going down. Yeah. It's like you've gone down. It's like... Your heart and love and zeal for the Lord just vanished. And we could always trace it back to one thing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It's love of money. I don't care what you tell me. Oh, it's because of this woman. It's because of this man. Yeah, because you love that money, right? Whether you're on the one side or the other side, whether you're the giving side or you're the receiving side, you love the money. True. Like, you know. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. You know what, though? You know, my wife is a millionaire. <laughs> you know, she's a millionaire. She's not saved. Millionaire. I don't ever have to work. But, man, looking at you, you're so miserable. Why is that? Right? But you're so dead. Yeah. I have money, though. No, but you're dead. Tell me, honestly. There's no joy in your life. How are you ever going to find joy in your life when you are unequally yoked together constantly? It's not about marriage only. Think about who you hang out with. Yes. Church people shouldn't, doesn't have to be your best friend, right? But worldly people should never be your best friend. Amen. Yeah. We have a lot of different characters in here. Yes. And we don't mash, right? But we're all the same body of Christ. Amen. So you just have to, you know, Bear with each other. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this, you know. I used to play a lot of basketball, so my ankle's pretty weak. Man, my ankle sometimes hurts out of no reason, right? Man, am I going to just hate my ankle and just not take care of it? I have to take care of it more. Yeah. I mean, if we do in the body of Christ, that's why you have to love your brethren. If there are, you know, certain parts that's, you know, more sick, weak and stuff, you know, you got to pay more attention, right? which means you got to pray more, yes. right? Just pray. Pray for your body of Christ, right? Instead of always trying to break your finger off, right? <laughs> Think about it. If this finger is the person that you hate the most at church, you know, you still have to see them in heaven for all eternity, yeah. right? And you're like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to break it? No. You bear with it. Amen. You try to improve upon it. So when it comes to... Christian relationship amongst brethren, you know, just always, always have that view like Lord Jesus Christ had. Be compassionate, right? Yeah. You have to be compassionate. But coming back to the subject of it, you know, because you love money so much, you know, you neglect the Word of God, you neglect relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you neglect ministry, you neglect yourself spiritually. There's always two in you, right? New man and the old man. Yes. New man is nowhere to be seen in your life. It's all about old man. I mean, looking at Romans 6, looking at Romans 7, right? You can never get rid of it until you go to heaven. Yes. So you're going to live with it. Even Apostle Paul probably the holiest Christian ever, yeah. he had to deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you and I are dealing with it each day. Yes. Then how are you dealing with it? Are you considering it dead, right? Like kick it, right? Kick, kick your old, old body. Kick it. Each time you're trying to move More and stand God. up, just kick it, right? Yes. Kick it with the word of God. Kick it with prayer, Amen. right? Just kick it. 
you know, it keeps you bad thoughts, it keeps you wicked thoughts, it makes you do wicked things, yes. just kick it, you know? You guys know how to kick. A punch, right? You know, do it. Because if you don't constantly keep it dead, what's going to happen? It's going to, it's a zombie. Yes. It's going to wait, it's going to be a reason and it's going to control everything. Isn't that sad? You know, we're letting this dead thing control us yeah. when we should let Holy Spirit control us. Yes. So, Love of money just expands to everything, just like what the Bible says. That's why all the new versions changed that verse, including King James, old King James, I'm sorry. And where does that all stem from? Let's go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 chapter 2, verse 15. It's amazing how, you know, Every single Bible, they unify together against King James Bible. Yes. It's like, you know, then, then if I'm just a third party, I'm looking at it, hey, something's wrong. Yeah, it's either King James or it's the other Bible because they're so different. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Every new Bible changed it. They said, do your best. Do your best. What I just read is a command. Yes. Imperative. Do it. Yes. When God said do it and you don't do it, it's a sin. Amen. But when you change it, do your best. What does that even mean? Right? right? What's doing best? Nothing. So I work. I'm tired. I ate, I have food coma. So my best at this moment is to just get the Bible, open the, wherever it is, I'm gonna read one verse, I'm done. Itis. That's my best. Yes. Don't criticize me. That's how I do it. That's good. And my finger's always near Psalms. <laughs> yeah. Like, it sounds like 120s are pretty short. So not, don't ever tell me to go 119, okay? You know, I'm going to go after 119. Hit her, quitter. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Woo. You don't meditate in the Word of God. You don't read the Word of God. You don't study. Then you're disobeying that command, 2 yes. Timothy 2.15. But every new version, they changed it. Because devil doesn't want you to study the Word of God. No. The devil doesn't. I mean, you go to a Catholic church, you ask him some question from the Bible, hey, son, <laughs> enough. Yeah. You know? You go to other churches. Nope. Nope. You're reading it too much. Right. I've heard that before. You're thinking too hard, mm-hmm. you know? Just follow the traditions. You know, just repeat after this rosary, repeat after this prayer over and over and over, you know. I mean, people don't realize how much their religions are following Catholic religion. Yes. Babylonian religion. Yes. Right? Just repeating after the same word over and over, vain repetition, it comes from them. Yes. Right? All the idols, right? Yes. You know. Buddhists, get out of here. Amen. They were doing it a long time ago. The right? They're doing yes. it a long, long time ago. Buddhists, Zen Buddhists, you know, you know, Zenism, everything. They were already there. Yes. Right? Well, baptism, right? They've been doing it a long time ago. Right? Baptismal regeneration, they've been doing it. Yes. You're, you're just copying them. Yes. Especially sprinkling, you know, to babies and stuff. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing? Uh, you know, you got to be baptized to go to heaven. But if I'm at a plane, it's going to crash, not to ocean, because some people say that's a baptism, you know. No, no I'm going to crash to the mountain, okay? Oh, no. I'm going to crash to the mountain. No more chance. I can't get baptized. Yeah. No. Am I going to go to hell? Right. No. Last time I checked, the thief, he didn't get baptized. Amen. Well, he, he was in paradise, yeah. right, with the Lord. So all these are getting me- me- I mean, messed up over and over. 
Why? Because they're using the wrong Bible, yeah. right? right? People's role model, you know, Augustine. I mean, he's the creator of, you know, regen baptism of regeneration, right? He shouldn't be a role model, right? He's, he's a wicked. I mean, he caused many people, many, many people to be murdered, just like Calvin did. They all have the same tree. Yes. So now going back to Balaam, do you love money? Just be honest with yourself. Do you love money? Yes. I mean, like, you, you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, man, I'm getting overtime after overtime after overtime, you know? Man, this is good stuff. Wednesday? Not today. You know, it's tough. You know, I get off work at 6, and that means that I get a 30-minute rest and I got to go. Mm -mm. Pastor says he, people shouldn't judge anybody, so I, you know. <laughs> but I said, spiritual man judges himself. Well, you judge your own self, right? You know, like, ah, oh, yeah. You know, twist everything that I say, twist everything the Bible says. Yeah, you know. You know, you know what's the worst human beings out there? Taking a, advantage of people's kindness, right? Yes. You and I always take advantage of, you know, Lord Jesus Christ's yes. kindness. His grace and mercy, you just constantly do it. You take advantage of it, right? And you're like, ah, you know, I'm just weak. Good, you're weak. But you have that weakness with pride. Mm. Even though I'm weak, I could do this on my own. Bad. You know, that's why pride is always there. Yes. That's why you can never get out of your state. Because you love money. Along with that, you have that pride. I am certain somebody, you know. You have that false sense of, you know, assurance. Even though I'm not doing church ministry now, it's okay. Once I make a million bucks, I'm going to go back to a full force, better than ever before. You know, I'm going to just glorify God. I'm going to be the gung-ho, you know, Bible believer out there everywhere. You see me somewhere, Whoa. you know. No. Even before you even get closer to that, you're done. Yeah. Who do you think you are? You think devil's going to just let you do it? You know, you've been already deceived by the devil. You've been used by the devil. Yes. I mean, don't you want to like get right anytime soon? Because what happens? People who fall in covetousness and never get out. Because the Lord gave you a lot of warnings, Christians. The Lord gives me warning. I mean, if I fell into covetousness, if I never woke up, I would have been like Balaam. I would have been dead, like Numbers 31.10. I would have been dead, right? And I would have done some wicked stuff. Right? Balaam caused Israelites to sin. He didn't do it directly, but he talked to Balak. He gave him the counsel how to do it. You become that indirect Christian, the worst of the kind, right? Never take any responsibility. But when you love money, you're crazy. The Bible says you've gone astray. That's why when that dumb ass was talking to him, can you imagine? I know we have a dog. Our dog starts talking to me. Hey, stupid, stop. You know, stop doing what you're doing. I'll be like, whoa, 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 you know. My dog is talking to me, you know. Yeah. Something's wrong, right? But this guy was so blinded by his covetousness, he went crazy. That donkey, the ass was talking to him. It was like a natural thing for him. Mm -hmm. Get out of the way. I'm going to kill you. Fight us. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And if we saw that happening in front of us, we're like, man, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but that's how you become. Yeah. yeah. You become crazy. You need to get my money. You become crazy and crazy and crazy. So you can't talk, you can't talk think, act according to the word of God at that point. Yes. You're lost cause. There's no hope until you go through it all the way. I mean, thank God if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you won't burn in hell. Amen. But you're going to go through the all steps. Because... That's why, you know, it's so important. When temptation comes your way, you got to stop. Yes. 
you can't be going to, you know, trying to decide. You already committed sin at that point. Once it's present to you, shown to you, you just got to leave it. Once you start going to that decision stage, you know, you've already committed sin. And then a lot of times you act upon it. I haven't seen a person who's strong enough when it comes to money to stop in the middle. Yeah. Ask all the billionaires. Millionaires. Yes. Do you think they stop at a certain point? No. They, th that greed just comes in. Yeah. You can't stop. As Christians, do you want to be, do you want your legacy to be someone who loves money more than the Lord? No. If you're neglecting things of God and ministry because of your work, you love money more. Yes. I know this country, United States of America, we don't work like Germans. When they came, uh, Dr. Rockman had a story, this German person came to America, they asked, so what are your work hours, 40 hours? Oh, you guys have part-time? 40 hours is a part-time to them. They work like 68 hours. Ask people from Japan and Korea, right? So I know because we have strong employment laws, yes. especially liberal California. So don't tell me that, Jazz. You could say I don't want to work overtime. Yeah. It's according to the law. Right. But I don't know. I mean, it's up to you, right? If you love money that much, just destroy yourself. What do you want to do? What do you want me to do? Hold your hand? Go to your work? Get out of there. Bad testimony, right? Yes. You have to keep your own testimony. If you're saved, you should have a good testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, as much as I love you guys being here all the time, but if your motive is wrong, you shouldn't be. Yes. Because you're going against the spirit things of God. You're going with your flesh. So quickly, then what is the so if we have way of Balaam, then it leads to the heir of Balaam. Let's go to book of Jude. Jude. Jude verse eleven. Jude verse eleven. Jude verse eleven. The Bible says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and rank greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So the way of Balaam is loving money. The, the heir of Balaam is going back to Balak. So Balak is the type of Satan here. Satan is offering you all this stuff, blank check. Since you love money, so what did Balaam do? He went back to him. And then he gave him that wicked counsel, the doctrine of Balaam. Let's go to Numbers chapter 31. Numbers chapter 31. You know, Bible is a perfect word of God, and God is scary God. God said in Romans chapter 8, verse 13. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. You live like the Balaam, you don't get right, you will die. That's what happened to Balaam. Yes. Don't be a fool. I'm only a teenager. I'm only in my 20s and 30s. If the Lord says it's time, it's time. That's it. According to the word of God, if he live after the flesh, he shall die. Yeah. That's not what I say. I mean, that's God's warning to us. Numbers chapter 31. Let's look at verse 8. So this is how Balaam ended his life. Who had the blank check. Probably he had like everything he ever wanted. But this is how he ended. Numbers 31, 8. And they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Who else? Balaam, also the son of Bear, they slew with the sword. That was his end. You think Lord was going to let him get away with it? 
Look at, let's go to verse 25. I mean, chapter 25. After what he has done, chapter 25. So something happened. Look at Numbers 24, verse 25. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Okay? Well, verse 25, chapter 25, verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Hey, that's the doctrine of Balaam. Yeah. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And go to verse 9. And those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. So these people died because they were following this doctrine of Balaam. What happened? The error of Balaam is that Balaam went back to Balak. Isn't that what you do? Yes. Man, you love money. Yeah. You pretend that, oh, I don't love it, you know. So you be faithful in the ministry for like one or two years. And I don't see you anymore. Nobody sees you anymore. Oh, we know where to find you. We just need to find Balak in your life. You know, that's a trinity. Antichrist, Balaam. Balaam is the prophet. Balak is the antichrist. And Baal worship. He's the Satan. So you, you, you just open up yourself, Christian, to the devil, right? Yeah. And how did this guy start? Because he loved money. So you go to good school. You're like, you know what? I'm, we have some children here. You know what? I'm going to go to East Coast. I'm going to go to the best school ever. Why? To give glory to God or to give glory to your family so that you could have a lot of money? What is it? What's the purpose? Ask all the brother, brothers and sisters who went out of state, who are away from Bible-believing church. Do you think they say, oh, yeah, I recommend you do it. I never heard anybody. Yeah. They said they could go back, you know, be at a place where there was a Bible-believing church. Amen. Don't lie to me that, oh, yeah, that Bible-believing church is an hour away from me. You never go. <laughs> I never seen anybody go. Oh, there's a Bible in church hour and a half away. You never go. Yeah. It's too snowy, you know. <laughs> I, I, it's too cold. I don't have transportation. I don't make it. It's a bunch of, you know, lying That's right. brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what you do. So if love of money is your priority, I understand. Go wherever you want. But don't tell anybody else that oh, I love Jesus Christ, I love the ministry, when your testimony is totally opposite. You know, as I always say, I learn new things. When you're driving, you're at a stop sign. If you have the right of the way, you should go first, right? Mm -hmm. But California is different. <laughs> California is their California stop, right? People never stop completing and they just go yes. wherever they went. And, you know, people, man of justice, macho man, woman, you know, you get angry, right? Oh, yeah. they didn't follow the rule, you know, all that stuff. But I come to a conclusion where, you know what? I expect the worst of people. Right. That's how they do it. It's not yeah. going to affect my safety, yeah. and my well-being, and my brain. That's how you should act anyways. You know, I came here before you, but you know what? You're going to go ahead. You know, I learned it. You know, it took a long time, you know. But I learned it, like, wow. No, that's how we view people anyways. As Christians, you won't be disappointed in other Christians if you know they're not superhuman beings. Mm -hmm. I expect you to love money because that's what you are. Yes. But you don't want to be that person. Right. Why do you have to be that person? Why do you have to be that majority? Right. Why do you have to be this Israelite who follows the doctrine of Balaam? Commit fornication, idol worship, Destroy yourself. Why do you constantly destroy yourself, Christian? Don't give yourself a self-pity. I, I wasn't born with a you know, golden spoon. Who cares? If you did, you might not have gotten saved. Yeah. Thank God for wherever you are. Yes. Be happy that you're saved and God is giving you opportunity for, to live for him. Amen. Or else your end's going to be just like Balaam. You're going to Follow the way of Balaam, 
you're going to do the air of Balaam, right? So you're just going to go back, you know. Let's look at verse 16, Numbers 31, verse 16. So what happened? You know, Balaam sounds like a good guy, you know. He's following Lord, you know. He doesn't. I mean, if we had more time, we'll go into it, but he's not. He's, he's just like all the false preachers that's mentioned in you know, 2 Peter and current modern-day false preachers in the back days, too. Numbers 31, verse 16, Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam. Balaam! Balaam went back and talked to Balak. Tell him, you know what? This is what you got to do. I can't curse them, but I know how they're going to be destroyed by God. To commit trespass against the Lord in the manner, matter of Peor, and there was a plague among the congregation of the people. That's what you're going to turn out to be. <laughs> Last thing I want my legacy as a Christian is to be known as a Balaam of the Christians. Yeah. Right? And many of you, if, but if you love money, consider yourself a spiritual Balaam. Yes, sir. Right? If I ever start loving money, I become a spiritual Balaam. Yes. Right? That's why you and I have to be really, really be closer to the Lord. Amen. You and I have to judge our sins on a daily basis. Yes, sir. You and I have to make sure that we are in the Word of God, we're in prayer day and night. Amen, amen. And always making sure that, you know what, that love of money could always come into me. Yes. So I always have to ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to give me strength, make the decision in my life. Yes. Would you want to end up as a Balaam? Let's pray.